doing live. Are you recording? I am. Here we go. Right. Well, hello everybody and welcome to Unpacked Lunch. We're going to be unpacking Sunday's talk um, with Steve in just a moment. So if you're joining with us, a real welcome. Uh, really glad you're here. If you haven't watched Sunday's talk, it's not a problem at all. Um, still stick with us because there'll be questions that are totally relevant to your life, I'm sure. Um, but if you do want to catch up on Sunday's talk, uh, either after this or uh, come back and refer to this later, um, uh, then you can do if you just go on our Facebook page or our YouTube page or our website, uh, you can go on the most recent service, fast forward through uh, all the other stuff and find um, uh, Steve's message as we started a brand new series called Better Together. So welcome if you're just joining. So I can see Rhee's joined us and Joanne as well. You've joined us as well. So really glad um, you've joined us so far. If you've got any questions for Steve, either about the series, about last episode um, or about anything in life, um, please do stick it in the comments and we'll be able to look at those a little bit later on. Um, but Steve, if you're with us, if you can join us, that would be fantastic. I am here. Hello. Yeah. How you doing? You're right. Yeah. Very well. Very well. Johnny, how is um, uh, how is the furlough time? Three weeks seems to have flown past, but uh, for us or for me. But how is how was the time for you? So yeah, it's been odd actually. So it's my first day back from furlough. Um, so um, uh, as you know, <laughs> I hope. Um, but, um, <laughs> but yeah, no, it did. It was, it was an odd one because it did fly by really, really quickly. Kind of feels like a week rather than three weeks. Um, yeah. But at the same time. Um, obviously because the weather hasn't been great either and you're sort of stuck around the same four walls uh has felt really um uh yeah not particularly fun yeah it hasn't felt yeah. relaxing in the sense that you've been able to go out and do stuff like you normally would but, sure. um, but managed to get some words down on paper from a from a um degree at the moment as well so that was that was productive so um yeah it wasn't bad. well glad you're back mate glad you're back yeah, me too steve you kicked off brand new series better together on yep. sunday um, and as part of that, you shared a little bit around uh, how you like to spend time with your kids and with Rachel, with Sam, Alice. Um, yeah. it, although interestingly, you skipped out Alice, I noticed on the talk. I don't think you actually mentioned how you like to spend no, time. No, I didn't. I only mentioned Rachel as, as the only child. And I did get a complaint from my son, Sam, just saying that all the times that I spend with him, you know, they obviously mean nothing. No, so he was. He was he, enjoyed no, it was Sam Peterson. Talk. It was son in law, Sam. Oh, it was your son in law. Okay, well, then he because does. He definitely. likes whiskey, you see, whereas my son doesn't so so you know sam peterson just goes up in my estimation you see that that was why so that's why he was so offended i think yeah my son that is that and is yeah alice didn't get a mention but i still quite like her <laughs> <laughs> so steve you did mention um as as part of your talk that you like spending time with rachel in the car karaoke yeah. uh, you know doing karaoke singing along I want you to imagine you've been picked up by james corden you're in the seat next to him, Rachel's in the back, you get to pick yep. three songs. What would be the three songs that you and Rachel choose to sing in front of the nation? Uh, be hard to be able to say what Rachel's would be, uh, but um, uh, she often goes with what I like though. So uh, I think um, Mr. Blue Sky, ELO from the 1970s, absolute classic, sing, sing our, our hearts out to that one. Um, there is another song, I think it was from the 90s. Um, uh, it was by uh, Mark Cohen, it was called Walking in Memphis. And uh, and so again, that's a song that we would play over and over again as as we um, as we drive and travel. And of course, you've got to have a little Ed Sheeran of Castle on the Hill, uh, just because um, that is the speed that I would normally be doing uh, when we're driving. So um, <laughs> uh, 
uh, yeah, so probably those three would be up there. But also, um, oh, what was it now? It was Summer of 69. That's another classic which we would uh, we would really go for. Yeah. So I've been in the car with you when tracks have come on and you've started singing and you don't yeah. mumble it. You go full being. Oh, definitely. Singing. Definitely. It's very right funny. There. But you always it's, yeah it's very it's very funny when you get stuck in queues and if we're still busy singing and cars are coming up alongside i love it i love it awesome yeah, awesome good fun so you're speaking on sunday better together intimacy yep. with god run yep. us through your talk yeah sure um basically i think all of us long to be uh, known loved and accepted and uh, we want to feel close to people certainly um uh not necessarily everyone but to have some people who are, we're really close with and um what it is i think deep down in all of us is that we yearn for intimacy uh, mm -hmm. we that yearn for that safe place where we can really be ourselves and feel connected and close to someone and uh, so we search for that with regards to our friends. We, we find it within families, you know, kids definitely, babies need that intimacy, that touch, that closeness. Um, but we also try to find it in romantic relationships um, too, of marriage and, and that kind of thing. And so the question that I posed was this, um, is it possible to have an intimate relationship with God yeah. when you can't see him, when you can't hear an audible voice, when you can't touch him? And so I really wanted to uh, explore that. Yes, I believe that we can. Of course, I believe that we can have this intimacy with God. Um, uh, and the way in which um, I kind of shaped my talk was really around uh, love languages. A guy called Gary Chapman once wrote a book called The Five Love Languages. And it's how people find intimacy with one another, because all of us have the capacity to be loved as well as to love. And we express that love and receive love in different ways. And uh, so just as that's the case with human beings. So, you know, one of my uh, love languages is words of affirmation. Um, that's what that's how I receive love. And so if people praise me, if people say nice things about me, those words hold real weight. And uh, uh, and so uh, we all uh, receive love in a certain uh, in different ways um, you know others it's about time others it's about gifts some people know that they're loved if someone will come and bring them uh, a gift or some kind of present for others it's you know if you sort the plumbing out if you if you hang the picture up then they'll know that you love them you know we all receive it in different ways and we all give it in different ways and so if we find intimacy uh, in relationships, in human relationships, through these love languages, I believe that we can also find intimacy with God through those same love languages. And God doesn't just have favorite love languages. Uh, he created them. So therefore, um, uh, uh, but, but he expresses his love through those love languages. And so I picked up on two, um, on words of affirmation and the other one being time, quality time. If we want to have intimacy with God, one, we need to know what God says to us to affirm us, th th those words of love. And we need to be expressed words of love to him and adoration and praise. Uh, and uh, just as um, God will give us time, so we need to create time to be with him too. And so with the words of affirmation, I just picked up on some of the things that God says about us. And honestly, if we could if we could truly grasp what God thinks of us, um, it, it would radically, radically alter our self-esteem, our, our sense of worth and value, uh, because God says that, you know, he's made us. So, so we, are, we are his creation, who uh, he has chosen, that, that we're not a mistake, um, that, that he values us and he pours his, his love uh, um, over us he sings over he's in within the bible he he just pours out how special he finds us and how much he loves us and how he's demonstrated that how he comforts us how he provides for us and and that's they're the affirming words that god speaks to us and in fact um just to capture some of those you can go onto youtube and just type in um the father's love letter 
the Father's love letter. And uh, when you type that in, um, you will see all of these verses as um, someone speaks over, you get these lovely pictures of creation and all of that. But it's basically just taking the various verses from all over the Bible when he talks about how he loves and values us. And so God speaks those words over us. Um, uh, and it's our responsibility then not just to say, oh, thanks very much, uh, but it's actually for intimacy, we need to express it back. So if I say to Sarah, I love you, and she just says, thank you, um, uh, that doesn't build intimacy. Uh, but when she says, and I love you too, then, you know, life is happy uh, because intimacy can happen because it's a two way thing. And so therefore, we need to create those times where we tell God how great he is. And for me, worship is a great way for that, because uh, worship can help to express. Oh, I love singing, uh, so I love music, and uh, those kind of words within the worship songs, the praise songs, the thanksgiving songs that we sing, are, are an expression that I can use to God, uh, to say to God how great he is, that he has done great things. That's one of the things which uh, we sang on Sunday. And so to, to, have, to help to build and grow intimacy with God, we need to hear what it is that he's saying to us and we need to express our love and gratitude to him but the other thing is um uh, the other love language that i picked up on is quality time you know the the promise the biggest promise that comes over time and time again within uh, the bible is this is that i will be with you and so god has all in the, all the time in the world for, for you and me, because he is always with us. He will never give up on us. He will never leave us. And so, so time and presence work together. Uh, and so God gives us all the time because he gives us his presence all the time. Uh, and so in understanding that, it, we need to be able to uh, create moments where we can have quality time with him. And that's why for me, I would go for walks. I love nature. And so I could walk through nature, and, and I sense God's presence uh, with me and I can talk to him. Uh, and I use that as part of my love language then of saying, God, what you've created, this is beautiful. There's something stirs within my heart. And, uh, and so I think if, if God is real, which I believe he is, and if God wants a relationship, which I believe he does, that ultimately life is about a relationship with God, then um, uh, to to hear his words and to speak words of love to him and to uh, have time with him and invest quality time with him are ways in which can draw us so close to him so that's how i was yeah, shaping the yeah. talk on on sunday that's great five love languages if you haven't read it um i'm sure we've talked about it before in church it's um sold millions of copies kind of book uh, yeah. Gary Chapman definitely recommend it uh, so those five love languages are words of affirmation so if I can get them I haven't got them written down so this is risky words of affirmation yeah. quality touch yeah. gifts, quality time uh, quality time not quality yeah. touch I mean both the quality you'd hope um, quality, well, yeah. time, quality touch <laughs> <laughs> and acts of service is that right gifts and acts that's of service right. gifts and acts there somewhere that's right they're the five yeah <laughs> And so uh, I'm going to ask you in a second, what would be yours, just so I can write them down um, and hope we get a pay rise out of it. But um, yeah, yeah, just want yeah. to think about that. Just want to welcome people who are watching and a whole bunch of people watching. Trev Frost, thanks for join, uh, joining us. Uh, George uh, Wortley, welcome. Um, uh, Vary's joining us. Don has joined us. Peter Haver, uh, Havers is joining us. Um, Phil, Phil Moore, uh, so glad you're tuning in uh, and watching with us at the moment. If anyone's got any questions, um, please do stick them down so that, uh, yeah, the, um, the senior leader himself can, can I, answer them. Yeah, can I just say that there is one comment there which just stands out to me. It's Ali Chapman who says, I like whiskey too, Steve. Yeah. So that's, yeah. that's really good. Ali, then you and I just need to have a little bit of time together where we can sample a tipple. That's all I can say. Sorry, carry on. Yeah. Quality time though, is that right? Yeah. <laughs> cool. So love languages, Steve, what would be yours? Um, so words of affirmation, um, uh, I, it's, it's desperately sad, but um, I crave them. I really do. Um, uh, and so, um, yeah, they, words hold huge value for me. Uh, and so when someone praises or says something good uh, to me or about me, then um, that holds huge weight. And much more than if someone brought around a gift much more um and i think the other one uh, for me so within marriage uh, within uh, marriage to, uh, to sarah touch is really important 
Um, uh, so when we go on walks, if she takes hold of my hand, I know that we're doing well. If she doesn't, <laughs> I will think we've got something to work on. <laughs> uh, so, so touch speaks uh, really. And I'm, I'm quite a huggy kind of person anyway. So um, yeah, that's a way, uh, a way for that. And I think the way that, uh, so that's the way that I receive love. I think the way that I express it um, is possibly time uh, and that I love to invest time with people and I will push other things out in order to be able to spend time with people. And um, acts of service, I love to be able to do things which will help people. That's yeah. cool. Well, I live with your son, Sam, and uh, my big one is words of affirmation. His big one is acts of service. So I tend to cook for him. So I feed his belly and then he feeds my ego and we're set. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I was gonna say a marriage made it, oh no, it's not, no. <laughs> <laughs> Although I'm fairly sure some people on the street think that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Jan Bedford, you've just commented saying you are fab. And I'm assuming that's to me, not to Steve. But um, before yeah. you can contest that, uh, next question, Steve, <laughs> going a little bit deeper into it. Um, yeah. You said that the idea of intimacy can, also I think the idea of intimacy can actually seem almost a little bit off-putting, almost a little bit soft for some people, and maybe a little bit more... Um, almost a bit too personal and and we have that idea of touchy feely intimacy yeah. um, and so the idea of that being with God is quite a might be a strange concept for those who haven't really discovered that for themselves or thought of that uh, but one of the the lines that you said which I thought was brilliant was that we need to connect relationally in order that we can grow spiritually um, so yeah. that can kind of sound a little bit soft so so can you go into a little bit of what that means yeah sure um, uh, i honestly believe that life is better connected. I think that's how we have been wired, how we've been made as human beings, not to live in isolation, but to live in community. Uh, and so, uh, so of course, life will be better connected. But, um, but faith, uh, faith cannot and should not be lived out in isolation. You know, uh, it needs to be worked out in the context of relationship, relationship with God, but also relationship with others. So therefore, you know, um, there is no getting away from it that we need others to encourage us. We need others to motivate us, to hold us accountable. We need role models. Um, uh, we need teachers. Uh, we need people who will help us on in our journey of faith with God. And, uh, and so that's why at The Forge we have that phrase that we want to connect people relationally uh, in order for them to grow spiritually, because I think it's, it, you're only living half a faith life if you if you're if it's just about you and God and in fact that's not even that because um God uh, Jesus when he was here he said you know we're to love God and we're to love uh, others and and Jesus the ultimate the law of Christ was that we are um uh to uh, to love each other that's the new command and so faith in God it is this vertical uh, relationship but it is but it's worked out horizontally it's worked out with each other uh, and so uh, so therefore if we can connect people relationally if they can have those relationships which so like Johnny you and I we have we have a friendship so it's not just a working relationship it's a friendship well at least I think it is on my part it is anyway um you know so if if you say something which I think is inappropriate I, I could challenge you on it and I could say Johnny I don't think that's the wise thing to say or, or I could do something um uh, which 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 is inappropriate and you could say Steve you know what are you doing uh, and, and we need people in our lives to, to pick up. We also need people to be able to say, Johnny, your talk on Sunday, ah, oh, it was the best. Uh, because you need to know that God has used you. Uh, and how do you know that? Well, you'll only know that if people tell you. Otherwise, you're guessing or you're thinking, well, that was just a talk. Uh, and so we need the input from, from other people. Uh, and, uh, and we need this at, at different levels. Um, yeah, I don't know how much of this um, I, I will pick up on this coming week, but just just very quickly, and that's mainly because I haven't prepared this week yet. <laughs> um, uh, but uh, you know, we need people ahead of us. We need people who have who have done the journey beyond where we are, so that they can be role models to us, so that they can teach us. And so, you know, as soon as we finish this, I'm going on to a webinar um, linked with a church that is further ahead than us, so that I can learn from them. Um, we need people alongside us, people who are in the kind of the same place as us that we can work, work, work with and journey with and, and learn together 
um, uh, in doing that. But we also need to have people who would be some steps behind us because our faith has to be worked out. And it's not just about getting for myself, it's about working it out and, and encouraging others. And so that's why groups are so important because not everyone's gonna be in the same place in their walk with God. So there are people to encourage and to motivate who are further behind us. There's those who are with us and there are those ahead who we can learn from. And so I think that's why relationally we need to be connected in order to grow spiritually. I think that's so good. And in my head, the just like a recent experience where I'd have experienced that outside of the faith circle, but would definitely be able to relate it. So since the rules have relaxed slightly and we've been able to hang out, um, uh, socially distanced and the rest of it in slightly larger groups. Myself, uh, a guy called Joe and a guy called Dave, we've been able to go out to a forest and have a little campfire and sit around and talk. And the first time we were able to do it, just after so long of isolation and yeah. not being able to see people. And, and in that sense, we were all still living. We were all still going through life and breathing and doing all the stuff. But there was this recognition of when there was a connection relationally, we were actually able to breathe. And it really did feel like more of what living was supposed to be. Yeah. Um, so I can definitely see and, that. And that's not soft. That, no, that, yeah. Because in a sense, uh, what, what you build there is intimacy with these, uh, with these other guys. Yeah. Uh, and that's not a soft thing, uh, but, but, it's, but it is deep. Mm. It is deep because it, because it enriches us far more than, hi, Johnny, how you doing? Yeah, fine, thank you. Are you watching the football? Uh, it goes much deeper than that. Yeah, and it is vulnerable, which I guess is the is the is the bit where we probably put the, the yeah the mask yeah. up. Just saying, yeah. it's it's it not something we want to be talking about because it takes something from us. Um, That's right. So, what would you say to someone who who hasn't experienced that for themselves? If intimacy has been something that they would never equate with faith, um, yeah. what would you say is as a potential maybe next step for them? Um, I would say explore it, explore it and, and, don't, and don't give up on it. Don't give up on it mm. uh, because um, I, I truly believe that there is a God who has made us, who knows us, who loves us anyway, mm. uh, and who, who calls us, who longs for us to have a relationship with him, uh, not just to satisfy his ego, not because he needs us, because he doesn't, not at all. God is, is so different to us, but he calls us into a relationship with him. And uh, we, can, we can choose to fight that, we can choose to ignore that. And I think every time we fight it and ignore it, we're losing out on something. Uh, and um, if our value is found in what we own, that could be lost. If our value is found in how much we're loved by others, well, one bad comment can turn people <laughs> or, or one wrong action can turn people. But there is a God who is so consistent, so consistent in his love. And if we build our value and our lives around what he says about us and, and what he calls us to, bringing a sense of purpose, uh, why would we run away from that? Uh, and so even if God hasn't acted in the way that you had hoped, and maybe once you prayed and God never answered that prayer, so you thought, well, there's not a God then or is no point. Um, I, I would say don't give up uh, because God can't be judged by whether he answers prayer. It has to be something much bigger than that. Mm -hmm. and, and nor should he be judged by whether you've had a difficult life either because nowhere in the bible in fact that was a talk about three weeks ago or two weeks ago uh, that god doesn't say or jesus doesn't say you won't have bad days we will all have bad days uh, but and we can either be angry through those bad days because god has made it happen uh, or we can be comforted and strengthened through those bad days because we have god with us uh, and so um, it was lovely i had um, uh, an email off the back of the pentecost sunday um, uh, encounter event that, that Ben and the team led so brilliantly. And, uh, and Ben had just said, could I introduce Pentecost and introduce communion? So um, I, I did that. And I got an email off the back of um, that service uh, from uh, a lady called Rachel. And uh, Rachel just said that, she said, I've come to the Forge a number of times and I've loved the community and people have been so welcoming, but I just didn't get it. I just didn't get it. And since lockdown, she says, I've watched every week. And, um, uh, and on that Pentecost Sunday, she got it. 
somehow it clicked into place for her and uh, she was overwhelmed by it she was literally overwhelmed by it and uh, by by god and god's presence and god's strength and uh, i am so so proud of her that she didn't give up because she didn't get it but but she stayed with it because she was connecting relationally with us in some way and and certainly through her friend laura um uh, she was connecting with us uh, and that's enabled her to now grow spiritually that's amazing. Uh, and so so I would say, don't give up. If, if you've tried and, or, or you've had a bad experience or whatever, don't give up um, because uh, honestly, I believe it's so worth it. Whether it's just not knowing what you need to do, or whether it's that sensation yeah. of awkwardness around what you're supposed to feel or how you're supposed yeah. to around it. I'll, I'll always remember something that Ben said, our worship leader um, uh, at the Forge, uh, and I'm not even sure if he'll be able to remember, you know, remember saying it himself, but I can remember him saying that that breakthrough is always just on the other side of awkward. Um, yeah. <laughs> I think that's such a good line of, of it, is. It, it is, it's that vulnerability, it's that understanding if you haven't got it all together, it's the understanding that you might not quite know how it's supposed to look or what it's supposed to do, and it's awkward, but the breakthrough is just on the other side of that. Mm. Um, yeah. And I thought that's really cool. Hey, if you're watching online um, uh, with us, uh, yeah, big welcome. It's really cool to see so many names pop up. Pete Collison, uh, great to see you. Um, uh, yeah, join with us, Sophie, Luke, Lizzie, Ben, Paul, um, uh, Ali uh, again, Brenda. Um, yeah, Ali, um, really glad that you're joining with us um, today. So if you've got any questions, as always, post them in the comments below. Uh, we'd uh, love to get Steve to tackle them. Yeah, just, I think yeah. um, Johnny. Sorry, just a minute. Um, I would also just say though that you know uh, that intimacy with God um, uh, first and foremost uh, rests in what God has done for us. Yeah, uh, it really does. And so um, yeah. it's not all about what we can do. It is about what God has done for us. And the the ultimate um, demonstration of love is through Jesus and through what He's done through His death on the cross for us. If we ever want to know whether God loves us whether God is real, we just have to keep coming back to who is Jesus? Who is Jesus? Because uh, if Jesus is who he claimed to be, which is God, it answers the God question. Uh, it answers the question as to whether God loves us or not because of um, his death on the cross on our behalf, taking our place. So um, that's why I live with the confidence that I can always have intimacy. So the feelings might come and go and they do come and go, but um, that the, the intimacy with God is so achievable. And it's only achievable because of Jesus. So keep looking at Jesus. Hey, that's good. That's so good. Welcome, Heather, who's just joined us as well. Heather, I know that you lead a church. So if you've got any big, difficult questions to ask Steve, to catch him out. <laughs> yeah, look, yeah, 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 yeah. Cool. So before we get onto those questions, though, Steve, you're speaking again this Sunday as we carry on with the series. Give us a quick insight. What are we looking ahead to? Yeah. So um, uh, we uh, we are keeping going with this better together series. Uh, and uh, by the way, if people haven't seen the song of Ben singing um, Better Together, uh, you've got to be able to have a look at that. It's so good. And I just want to um, say that I lit the fire and I kept the fire going. So thank you very much. Um, yeah, so this coming one, Better Together, it's um, community uh, with those inside the church. And it is really building on why we need each other. Uh, and so that's the theme uh, for, for this Sunday, which I'm looking forward to. But I haven't prepared it yet. <laughs> hey well we're really looking forward to it as well hey if you've been watching with us really glad that you uh you have joined with us i can't see any questions in regards to this week no um although there was, there was a yeah there was a question that came up last week johnny um and i know that we had pre-recorded it but uh, i think it's really important that we do pick up so uh, one of the questions from last week when uh you had been speaking and by the way i thought your talk was fab okay words of affirmation That's it. um uh here we go the question was this um uh, you get what you deserve which was the the thing which jesus never said okay yeah and that's what you were speaking on in a world of inequality how can deserve be a valid concept that was a question that graham asked so how can um uh how can deserve as in you get what you deserve how can deserve be a valid concept how, how would you answer uh, that one, Johnny? So I think I get the question. And uh, and Graham, if, if you're listening, if you're watching on, or 
uh, if someone feeds this question back to you and it doesn't then then get in contact with us again um, and we'll try and continue the conversation and likewise with all of these videos if you're watching on catch up please do continue to ask your questions because we'll try and readdress them in the weeks afterwards but you get what you deserve but in a world of inequality um, in a world of inequality how do we know what deserving means and I guess the heart behind that is everyone lives with some form of injustice with some form of inequality and so therefore um how can we how can we ever seek to get any how can we ever expect that anyway i guess would be the the, the heart behind the question and i guess it's because i think it's true that we all live in a way that would um that would assume a cause and effect way of life um and so that would be if i do something I would expect something to happen as a result of it or if I do something I'd expect something not to happen as a result of it uh, and we would do that we would effectively bargain in every decision that we make in every thought that we do so if I decide to read a book the reason I'm deciding on reading that specific book is that I'll get something specifically out of it whether it's relaxation whether it's for pleasure whether it's for greater knowledge greater thought there'll be a bargaining progress uh, process where I will get something as a result of doing something. So I think even in a world where, um, uh, where whatever we're talking about isn't shared out equally, we would still all live in a way where there would be a certain assumption that we will get what we would deserve or get something out of what we put in. And I think part of the reason we live with that is that we would have a uh, and and to get the the roots of where this would come from you'd need a, a far deeper talk that i won't do now but we would all i think live with a sense of righteousness we'll all live with a sense of just you know justice going all the way back to um early creation myths or creation stories so thinking of adam and eve like all of that talks about is this idea of justice and righteousness it's embedded in us that there should be equal measures of morality in how we live um, and so we live in a way that is that that keeps the scales right as it was and so the fact that we tip those scales in a wrong way um, what should happen in a perfect world in terms of the whole cause and effect narrative that we live with is that what we should get isn't good for us we shouldn't get what we deserve we should live if all things being equal we should live in um, yeah I mean the, the the outcome of that from 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 God isn't good for us but the good news is Jesus and so uh, Jesus in a sense tipped the scales and and I've heard some people saying what Jesus did wasn't fair for us yeah and it, but I mean, that's confusing language but but and I think it what Jesus did was he tipped the scales back in order that in a perfect world in a we can have a perfect union with God and so we can get what we don't deserve. And so I think on, on the good news is on that side of things, and I'm aware I'm probably rambling now, but on the other side of that is, is the expense of that, is that all of the other stuff that we feel like we might deserve, we sacrifice because we get what we don't deserve. Um, so I hope that kind of answers your question, um, aware that that's probably part of a bigger conversation. I'm not sure if I've understood your question fully or not, but if you want to get in contact with us, please do, and we'll we'll have a bigger conversation if you want. So Johnny, is it the case though that um, you get what you deserve, uh, and um, uh, that actually someone gets what you deserve, even if it's not you? Um, someone gets what you deserve, even if it's not you. Well, so so if if um, with regards to how you know I do something wrong um, uh, that. Uh, I don't, if, if God forgives me, I don't get what I deserve, but someone else has already, has got what I deserved. In other words, it's been paid by someone else. Um, I don't know. I think, is the, I, th I, th I mean, yeah, I mean, oh, so, so in that respect, yes, in the sense of when you include Jesus into the narrative, because Jesus yeah. has taken what we deserve. And so that's what yeah. would make it fair. That's what would make it just. Yeah. And we might yeah. say that's unfair that Jesus took on our debt. And so yeah. there's the injustice there, the scandal of grace. Um, but actually that's taken on, that's taken on the debt as it were. So from, from a spiritual sense, absolutely. Um, of course, there are other things in life that, um, that not, benefit yeah. nobody yeah. and nobody gets it yeah. and nobody deserves yeah. it. So maybe I'm thinking. Yeah. On okay, that. sure. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you.
Cool. Hey, Steve, really looking forward to hearing what you've got to say on Sunday. If you've been watching Thank with you. us, um, uh, yeah, really glad that you've, you've stuck with us. Yeah. Watching um, on playback or on YouTube, um, put any comments uh, or questions that you've got there and we'll try and pick them up in future weeks. Um, but uh, yeah, thank you for joining with us and we'll see you again next week. Okay, thanks.